Welcome to the Voice of Salvation Women. This program is dedicated to inspiring and encouraging women of all walks of life through inspiring devotionals, testimonies, and much more. The Voice of Salvation Women is part of the media ministries of Zion Assembly Church of God with international offices in Cleveland, Tennessee. We pray that this program will be a blessing to your life. Your body torn from head to feet, the open veil to all I need. It draws me out from sin and death into new life in righteousness. Welcome to the Voice of Salvation podcast. My name is Carrie Snyder. I am a pastor's wife, mother of three boys, and a minister in Zion Assembly, Church of God. My goal for our time together is to share the Word of God and how it uplifts, encourages, and relates to the lives of women today. If I had a title today, it would be titled, Beloved Son. My subtitle would probably be along the lines of A Beloved Worth Fighting For. It amazes me the changes we see daily in society, more particularly relationships. It used to be that people felt that love was worth fighting for. But for the world, the mentality or action today is it's not worth it. Whether it's marriage, a friendship, a job, or a church we attend, our spirituality It seems as though people are ready to throw in the towel. I remember way back when I was in school, I was in high school, and one of my friends had a boyfriend that she had been dating for a couple years. He was a few years older than her, and she was pretty serious with him, even though she was pretty young. 
but one of our other friends started giving him attention. And you can bet that the fight was on. I mean, she would follow this girl around. She would accuse her. She would make sure that she knew that he was hers and that she wasn't giving up on him. I want us to take a second to think about relationships in terms of their spirituality because they're more than just physical. You know, there's ways that uh, relationships can influence us. The Bible says that we're not to be deceived, that bad company corrupts good morals. That's 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. We know that's true. Um, When I became a Christian, I remember the friends that I had and how that changed uh, very quickly. And I think that oftentimes people think that when they do give their life to Christ, that they have to change their friends. And it's not that we have to change our friends, but it's the fact that usually they quit coming around. So um, your interests change. And so what you were interested in doing before is not the same. So therefore, they don't want to be around us. Um, But our influences uh, or people can influence us. So it's always good if we're a Christian that we have that fellowship with other Christians and our friendships with those. But uh, the other thing that I would like to take a look at is uh, our commitment to others. Uh, Commitment is such a um, misguided or or misconstrued thing nowadays. Um, Commitment takes diligence, perseverance, consistency, and so much more. But again, I think that people have a jaded idea of what commitment is nowadays. And I feel like most topics whether it be um, on marriage or just dating or work or anything, always leads to being committed. We have to be committed to something that we're doing. And as I said, whether it's a relationship uh, between a spouse, a friend, a church member, a co-worker, or family, it takes preparation, effort, commitment, and hard work. The other day, I was watching a program with my three-year-old. It's called Bluey. And um, I have some wise words that came out of the mouth of Bluey, or actually, sorry, Dad. And that's his name is Dad. It's Dad and Mom and Bluey. And I can't remember the other child's name. But the dad had peed on his foot. And for those of you that may be not familiar with the show, it's a show about dogs. (laughs) So the dad peed on his foot and he was rinsing his foot out in the mop uh, sink that was in the laundry room. And one of the kids, probably Bluey, saw him doing it and thought it was the most disgusting thing ever. And he was just going around. He's like, oh, it's disgusting. It's so gross. And he said, it's not that big of a deal. So on this journey, the dad was going through the house and he was trying to let him know he was rinsing his foot off because he was trying to get to the mom. He wanted to give her a kiss. And both the kids just thought that was gross. And they were just telling the mom, no, get away, get away. He hasn't even brushed his teeth. Just all kinds of things. And the mom chuckled and she said, I haven't brushed my teeth either. And I'm fixing to eat a sardine. And so she popped a sardine in her mouth and then they tried to kiss one another. And of course, the kids were trying to fight against them. No, it's gross. And And the dad told him, you know, this wise dad, (laughs) he said, kids, if you're going to belong to someone, you better toughen up. I feel that way today, whether it's marriage um, or anything, but most importantly, our relationship with Christ. If we're going to belong to Christ, then we better toughen up. You know, Jesus said himself, count up the cost that it takes to follow him. And sometimes I wonder If we do that, when my husband was pastoring in Indiana, he would go and visit this uh, older woman in Chicago, and she was probably in her 80s, a very, very great saint. Her name was Sister Reba Gates, and she was a hard worker. She had a garden that was huge, and she ran her own watering system through it, and we came to visit her, and one time she said she had something to give me, and she took me down in her cellar, and she was going to give me some of her canning um, beans and things of that nature. 
And if any of you have ever canned before, you know that it's hard work. I preached a message recently, uh, and that's one of the thoughts that I brought out was that canning, I'll, I'll never do that again. Um, I'll buy what I need from the grocery store because it is a lot of work. But I told her, I said, Sister Gates, this is hard work. Don't give me these. This is hard work. And she told me, she said, Sister Carrie, anything that is worth anything is hard work. That still echoes with me today. Such a small saying, I guess, nothing profound, but it's so true. I'm going to read a passage where I got my thought from, and it's Luke chapter 9, verse 35. And the word says, And there came a voice out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. We know that this is the Lord or God speaking about his son. And when I thought of this, um, because using the word beloved, but also, more importantly, he said, Hear him. You know, the world wants us to hear a different sound when it comes to commitment and relationships or even our commitment to Christ. The world wants us to hear something else, but God is telling us, listen to what your Savior says. Listen to what the Word says. Today I have a special guest with me, and she recently shared her testimony in church, and it was so good. I can tell you there wasn't a dry eye in the place. And as I sat there and I listened, I thought this goes exactly with my thought, where we're fighting for our love, fighting for our beloved, fighting for our relationship with Christ. She's here with me today. I asked her a little bit ago um, how long she'd been serving the Lord, and she said, well, for about 17 years. She then kind of chuckled and said, it's been up and down. <laughs> it's been up and down years, hasn't it, Lindsay? Yeah. But... I think some of us can relate to that. I would like uh, for her to share her testimony. I appreciate you being with me uh, here today. Well, um, so about three years ago, I was engaged. I was in a relationship. I'd been in a relationship for about four years. Um, before then, I had or always had like um, long-term relationships. And if I was single, it wasn't for long because um, I just found comfort in and being with someone and because I struggle with being lonely sure so I was in this relationship and we were together for about four years before we decided we were going to be engaged but um I already knew before he proposed and popped the question that I wasn't supposed to be with him um because our relationship wasn't always good we were not good for one another. He, it was very toxic at times. He, um, he was not provoking me to be better in Christ-like. It was actually doing the very opposite. Um, but I thought that I could stick it out and change him and to want the same things that I wanted, which was to go to church and have a God-centered relationship. Um, but I qu quickly realized that I couldn't do that. But I chose to stay anyway because. I wanted to ultimately be married and have children. And you, that whole time, because I know when we came, you were dating this guy. Mm -hmm. And um, you still remain faithful, though, as far as, like, you attended church all the time. Even though, because I heard you say the ups and the downs. So, but you were still faithful in that aspect because I think you knew, this is just my perspective, but you knew that your relationship to the Lord was the most important thing. Even if we make mistakes, you knew that. And I wanted us to have a relationship that was that was God-centered, that we could both be pleasing to the Lord. And that's what I wanted ultimately. But sometimes me wanting to be married overpowered that. Sure. Sure. And that was hard. Um, I remember at a young age that I... My main goal in life was to be married by 25 or 26. And, had and we won't tell them what your age is today. <laughs> no, she's still young. For those of you listening, she's still young. So if you're single and you're a great Christian, 
Although this will probably be women listening, but if you know anybody, they have to be a great Christian, and I think you know what I mean by that. We but just need to That's right. <laughs> but go ahead. Sorry. I know you're fine. Um, but I always felt like I was made to be a wife and a mother, and um, that was always one of my main goals in life. But when the opportunity arose to be married, I jumped at the chance, and I accepted the proposal because I knew in my mind that this would be it. This is my chance to finally get what I wanted. Um, but when he proposed, there was already years worth of red flags, but I chose to accept them anyway, because I was going to get what I wanted in the long run. Um, there was cheating and lying and lots of vulgar language and things that were said and done to me, um, which I was not completely blameless of the situation, of course, but we were engaged to be married, so... I was thinking, well, we'll just, we'll work it out down the road. It'll be fine. Don't you think, too, and I could be wrong, but oftentimes we get into relationships and the very beginning of the relationship is someone totally different. Oh, for sure. It's like, it's great. You know, it's yeah. great in the very beginning. And then as time goes on and these red flags keep coming and keep coming, there's a part of us, though, that thinks in our mind, like, we're going to change them or we think they're going to go back to how they were. But in reality, that's not who they truly were. Mm -hmm. I think even me for myself, um, before I got married, I had dated a guy for, for like four years and we had talked marriage too. But yeah, there was red flags all over the place. And I kept thinking in my mind, um, if he would just, you know, he's going to change. He's going to go back to the way he was. But that wasn't who he was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they, they tell you all these things till like hooky and then they just show themselves yeah literally show themselves yep yeah so only good for a short amount of time okay only for a season mm -hmm. that's true um we got engaged at the beginning of 2020 and i ended it in august of 2020 so it was about seven ish seven ish months that we were engaged um, I, I was looking for a reason to get out of this relationship because for a while I just wasn't happy anymore. And I knew that it would, that our relationship was not serving the Lord. It, it wasn't, it was toxic and we were not going to be happy. And if we ended up married, I'd be divorced a year into marriage. And that's not what I wanted. And I probably could have ended up with a kid by then. Mm -hmm. Married, divorced with a kid. And that brings a whole, a whole different, even more issues. And I knew ultimately I couldn't go down that road. I, I had already stuck it out more than what I should have. Um, so I remember going to church one Sunday morning and going to the altar and asking God to help me with the situation that I was partially responsible for. And, um, and I chose to say in any way. And that Thursday of the same week, um, I was sought out by someone who wanted to feed me all these nice things, say all the right things. And, and so I decided that I would end my relationship and like a month or so down the road, I, I was with this wonderful person and he was just so great and told me all these great things and just basically promised me the name mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. everything you wanted to hear mm -hmm. everything I wanted to hear and um so he was all the opposite things of what I just came out of super nice sweet caring um I thought at this point I had finally landed who I was going to be with for the rest of my life like eventually we would we would get married and we would start a family and all these things. Mm -hmm. But those little pesky red flags we talked about, they they started coming up in this rela relationship as well. Mm -hmm. um, the circumstances of his situation that I knew about from the beginning were not changing as quickly as he had promised. I was starting to get annoyed with it, but because I loved him so much, I decided to kind of just ignore it. Sure. And just to keep going on. Well, and you opened up and you said at the very beginning, you your fears, you, you don't want to be alone. 
And you know, you're not the only one. I think there's a lot of people that actually can't leave a relationship, even if, like if it to it's toxic and they know that they need to get out of that relationship. Um, and of course, we're talking dating here, but they um, they don't. But if somebody else comes along, it's like it makes it easier. Yeah. Because then you think, OK, I'm not going to be alone now. Right. There's a lot of people like that. Yeah. So um, and why? Yeah, I don't I don't know, but it, it's like it makes it easier. It makes yeah. it easier to walk away from the one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It does to help you just kind of get over that little that little hump. Um so fast forward into a year and a half in this relationship, his circumstances still haven't changed. Um, and they weren't even close to changing. And more red flags have piled up. Um, I chose to ignore them because I felt like if I walked away, I would ruin my chances of getting the, the family that I'd always dreamed of. And um, so I'm really close with Courtney and Michelle, and we used to work together. And this was always the topic of our conversations. They would, we would talk about it, and they were like, well, Lindsay, what are you going to do? Like, you you can't be in this forever. Yeah. And I would just like, I don't know. It'll work. It'll work itself out. But one morning we were sitting in Michelle's office and they were pressuring me to make a decision. And, and Courtney was like, let's fast and pray about it. And I said, okay. She's like, we'll fast and pray for three days. And we set these specific requests out. Like if these, these, this is what we're looking for. And at the end of these three days, if we have one of these answers, then we know it's from the Lord. I said, Okay. So we said this on a Monday morning, and we were going to start our fast. We we're going to do Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And so that's what we did. We did it for three days. And I was, I was still with this person sure. during uh, during the um, fast, but I did not see him. He um, it actually worked out to where our schedules were conflicted, and we didn't see each other, but we were, we still talked. Right. But um, fast ended on Thursday. And on Friday, I had talked to him, and he had never said a crossword to me, was never mean to me or anything like that. But that Friday, he was. So even though he would say, oh, I remember now, because he never was mean to you, but you knew that circumstances in his life, he had not changed. And so you knew, okay, these circumstances have to change in order for us to move forward. Right. So, okay, and then now we're up to the place where circumstances still hadn't changed, but now his attitude had. Okay, go on. And it j he, like, just completely did a 360, like, I can't give you these things that I want so that I could give you. I I can't give you children. I can't give you a marriage. I can't make you happy. I don't even want these things anymore. Yeah. And I was thinking, you couldn't have told me that when you were first feeling that way or is this just an excuse but at the time i wasn't thinking oh this is bored <laughs> right <laughs> this is yeah no no you were in shock yeah i'm sure because when i said to the lord i said lord i want these specific answers right and when this showed up i was like mm -mm, that's yeah that's not it yeah 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 how often we pray, too, and we're like, Lord, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. And then and he follows through, but sometimes it is not the outcome that we think it's going to be. Mm -mm. It's not. It's actually the total opposite. But in the end, he knows what's best for us. Oh, he, above what we know, he does. So, so. Um, so in that day when he was just so not himself towards me I was crushed and um this went on for weeks and we still hadn't seen each other and, and I begged and pleaded with him like I'll give up these things I don't want those things anymore I just want to be with you I just want to be loved because I was thinking this is it for me like I don't want to have to start over like mm -hmm. and I was willing to give up the things that I had ultimately wanted your whole life mm -hmm. but do you think there was also a part of you that thought oh maybe down the line he might change his mind yeah because i think we've all been there mm -hmm. yeah yeah 
I was just trying just something to just hold on to. Yeah. Just something. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't budging. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. over these weeks that I hadn't seen him, I started hearing things from other people and I found out a bunch of things and and that crushed me even more. Sure. It, it put me in a in a depressive state. Mm-hmm. And I finally pulled myself together and my friends helped me pull myself together and realized you you just gotta let it go. Mm-hmm. You gotta back away. Mm-hmm. And so I finally pulled myself together and I contacted him. I said, Look, you're being a coward. I need you to return all my things and we'll just get this over with. Yeah. And so we finally were able to meet up and we did an exchange of our things and, and that was it. Mm-hmm. And um, I, that really put me into a dark place. Yeah. Because here I am at the age that I am having to start over again and not knowing if I'll ever get the desires of my heart and I don't know God I did I'm not I'm not proud to say that but well we're human yeah we're human and I think that you know God knows that he knows our thoughts he knows our hearts he knows everything about us he knows what we desire and um again as I opened I said you know, if we're gonna if we're gonna be owned by Christ, if we're gonna be in a relationship with Him, then we have to toughen up, because it's going to, it ain't always easy making the right decisions. Um, because the world would tell us, you know, oh, follow your heart, follow your heart. But the heart is deceitful. The heart will get us in trouble. The heart will Don't get know. us in trouble. Yeah. I don't have you staying in longer than what you're intended to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And doing things mm-hmm. that you never intended to do. Yeah. What's that saying? Sin will take you deeper than you ever wanted to go. Yeah. yeah. And that's the truth. That is the truth. But, you know, even in situations like like uh, you were talking about how, you know, sometimes we'll, through the journey, we may compromise or go through something that we never thought that we would or or um sin even if we never thought that we would but i'm reminded of david you know and not just david but david everything that david had done but yet the bible said that he was a man after god's own heart and i was just reading the other day in uh first or second chronicles i can't even remember (laughs) but uh, because it's all about this king and that king and this king and that king and and this one followed the Lord and this one disobeyed the Lord and all, back and forth. But there was one, and I can't remember, but w- what I remember it saying was that he did everything according to what God had commanded, but he did not please the Lord. So, you know, there's times I think in our walk with, walk with the Lord, excuse me, but in our walk with the Lord, that we have a list of do's and don'ts and we know, but if our heart is not in it, then it's not pleasing to the Lord. We're just checking our list. Yes. But then there's times that our heart is in it and we're still, we're going to make mistakes along the way, but our heart is in it and God knows that. And that is where I think many of us can say that we are so thankful for the grace and the mercy and the patience of God and how he pursues us. Um, I said the other day when I was preaching, I said, or maybe it was that Sunday night when I was speaking, I said, many of us can be in relationships or you can be in a relationship now or you can be engaged or you can be, you know, dating, just dating, or you can be in a marriage or whatever the case may be talking about, you know, being in love. But there is never a love or anything in this life that can compare to the love that our Savior has for us. That no matter what we do, he continues to come back and he continues to pursue us. I mean, it's not just you, too. It's all of us. We've all made mistakes. And I think about where the Lord has brought me from and the mistakes that I've made along the way. But yet he was always there and he never gives up on us. But people in this life will give up on us. 
you know, whether it be a boyfriend or whatever the case may be. But he doesn't. And the love that he has, it is, it is, it does. And in, in our understanding, even. Yeah. And I think sometimes he takes you to a place for you to realize that. Mm-hmm. Because you don't, you don't necessarily realize that when, when things are going great, you only realize that when you're down in the dumps, you're down in the valley. Yeah. That's when you really realize that. Yeah. And that's what I experienced this past year. Yeah. But I think I said, I told someone the other day, and I don't think this was in my message. I don't know, because I talk all the time, you know? <laughs> so sometimes I don't remember when I said something or who I said it to. But I said, even when we're down in the valley, if we've got our face on the ground and we're, and we, we're, you know, we're so close to it that we can even taste the dirt or smell the dirt, even then, though... God is there and he restores us. God is good to us. Um, for, for months, I had a pity party. And there was many nights where I would sit on my couch and cry and, and just ask the Lord, when is this going to be over? Goofy. And um, I remember one night I was sitting on my couch and I was crying when I, and I'm not normally an emotional crying person. I'm not, unless it comes to the Lord, like, right. I'll cry in church and, you know, whatever. Right. But you're not going to catch me crying in a movie or nothing like that. Right. Like, yes, I, that's just not me. I'm usually not either. But my situation just made me sad. And I was crying and I texted Michelle and I had um, asked her to pray for me. And, you know, she said she went and she loved me and, you know, all the best friend things. Right. All the things you needed to hear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I finally decided to pick myself off the couch and get my stuff ready for church the next morning. And I picked a dress that was on the floor that I had to steam because my clothes are just <laughs> everywhere all that time. <laughs> so I went to go hang it up and I was steaming it. And um, I was talking to the Lord and I asked him, I said, Lord, what I'm going to ask you is going to sound real silly, but Michelle has a dress that is similar to this one. Foo-foo. And um, if she wears this dress tomorrow, then I know that so you tell me that I'm going to be okay and this won't be like this for much longer. And I already know that, but I just want a hard side. I need to know that you hear that. I, I need to hear from you, Lord. Right. Yeah. I need yeah. something. And I knew if I picked something unlikely and hard, And if it was to come to fruition and it was to come true, then it had to be from the Lord. Well, yeah, because if any of anybody knows Michelle, which we do, she is very picky. And you said it so that she'll go through dress after dress after dress. And yeah. Yeah. And so, like, I knew if she wore that dress, it was the Lord. It had to have been. Yeah. And so I got up the next morning and got ready for church and um, was talking to the Lord. And I, I even think I mentioned it to him again. Lord, Michelle wears that dress. I know it's for me. And so I get to church at um, 10 o'clock for Sunday school. And also, if you know Michelle, she's never on time for anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's true. That shall be late. Yes. So um, it was like 1030, halfway through Sunday school or something. And I turn around and there was my shoe. And guess what she was wearing? She was wearing that dress that I'd asked for it about. Wow. And I just stop myself and almost melted yeah and so i got up and there was an empty sunday school room when i shoved her in there i said michelle get in here now get in here right now. she had no idea no it, you that was you and you alone and that your moment with the lord like you yeah you were like like what we would call that aha but it's more than aha when it comes to the lord because I hadn't told anybody. It was literally just between me and him. Mm-hmm. And I went in there and I, and I had spilled my heart out to her. And she looked at me. She calls me Lou. She said, Lou, this is the only thing I put on this morning. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, Lou, well, I know that's for the Lord because you changed 15 <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. And he was so mindful of what I needed. Mm-hmm. And I know that's not like a conventional thing, but. He he gives us what we need in that moment, what however it may be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
No, he he answered that specific need. Like you were specific. So I mean, how much more could we doubt that he's listening and that he's answering to? I mean, just wow. And I know I have been sad for these months because of all of this that happened. But now that I'm out of it, I realized that he answered it the way he did because he knew that I wouldn't have mm-hmm. walked away. Mm-hmm. He knew that I wasn't strong enough to do that mm-hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. And um, and I'm thankful for that because he knows better than we do. Yeah. Yeah. Not only were you fighting for for the your relationship with the Lord because you were like you were like I want these things I want these things, um because I want someone to lead me closer to Him us do it together but God was fighting for you too. So, um, it's just He knew some of us you know were were a witness to some of what you had went through. Obviously, we don't know completely, but I can't sit, I can't help but sit here and think, and maybe this is just me, but like right now where you are in the journey, to me, it's kind of exciting because I know that it's hard as far as, it's hard to find someone that has the same values and the same um, uh, goals in life that you do. However, they are out there. And, um, I also know from being married be 20 years this month that you find someone and you may not have everything, you know, like, oh, I'm I'm interested in this and you're interested in this. And, you know, you may not have all those things, but and and you do change over time. But the main things like Christ centered, you know, and to me uh, and then knowing their family, just things like that. And you can go into more depth of that. But. Um, I think that God works out as long as we keep him the center and both as a couple, he works out all the rest. He works it out some way, somehow, but kind of exciting too. Um, so that goes back to what I opened with, like, is this our beloved, our relationship with the Lord worth fighting for? Um, I've seen many people get heated over things in this life. And just recently, um, we had a Bible study and we broke up in teams. And that was so competitive, like very, very competitive. But it was all fun. But we've seen some serious competition, especially um, like when it comes to sports and things of that nature. But I wonder, are we just as competitive over our spiritual well-being, over our love or our beloved as we are with the physical things. Paul said in Philippians 2 and 16, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. So in my words, what Paul is saying here is I'm uh, not just holding on to the word of God for dear life, but also holding it out firmly, representing, being an example, fighting for what is right, contending for the faith so that our life can lead others to Christ. And then he goes on when he said that in my labor is not in vain. Um, He was saying that we know in the end that everything that we do for the kingdom, everything that we do, even like for our own spirituality, it's not without results. Paul knew all too well that we were up against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. And if we could only physically see the enemy with our eyes we could only see him like what he's doing you know whether it be in a relationship or or work or our finances if we could only see um but thankfully thankfully god has given us his word and he has given us discernment and the closer that we get to the lord he will reveal things he will show us and uh, i know some I, i i'm not being disrespectful here but I sometimes, to be funny, I call it my spidey sense, you know? Yeah. It's my spidey senses. Something's not right, (laughs) but we know that it's the spirit of the Lord that tells us, you know? And even when we don't want to think it or hear it or see it, he's telling us. He's nudging us. He's nudging us the whole time. But um, we're up against a real enemy with real tactics. And 
He's got real, you know, battle plans. But guess what? We've got battle plans too. God has given us his word. He's given us one another. Um, And so we know that this is war. Our relationship with the Lord is worth fighting for. The Bible says that those in the kingdom of God take what they want by force. And we don't care by what force and power we must employ to obtain what the Lord has for us. This competitiveness, excuse me, this competitiveness, it is the competitiveness that takes to win. We take it by force. We grab it violently with passion, with conviction. Um, And my final thoughts would be that even though you know what you want, your relationship with the Lord, your beloved, your love for him is worth fighting for. And when you continue to put him first, he'll continue to fight for you. And the Bible says that he gives us the desires of our hearts. And as long as the desires of our hearts line up with his word, then it's going to all come to fruition. Um, One thing that you said is that you'd always wanted this, this, and this since you were a child or a young adult. Um, That's not just something. I think that is something that God puts in us as women. He puts that in us because you were created by him and that's his design. His design is for you in that aspect. He tells us, be fruitful, multiply, you know, right? So um, it is a love worth fighting for. Thank you again for being with me today. Thank you for having me.